Hello and good morning. Good morning. Yeah. I love good your morning. name. Oh, it's just a radio name. It's just one of those things where you're trying to be different so people could write it into the Arbitron and they, they got it wrong. They were putting Earl and Harold and Errol and so they, they tried to convince me to change it so many times. I was like, ah, I, I can't. I can't do it. I like it. <laughs> hey, you two, congratulations on 25 years of marriage. We don't celebrate that enough. I mean, 25 years together is just amazing in this day and age. I agree. I think the president should issue a decree for our anniversary. Well, especially in the industry we're in, because if 10 years, if you make it 10 years in a marriage in Hollywood, that's a golden anniversary. That's true. <laughs> the two of you working together in a movie, is this a first time event? Oh my gosh, no. I mean, we met on the set of Hercules and I played a princess. So life imitates art. And uh, yeah, we didn't, we've, we haven't stopped working together since. We collaborate very well. Um, we fight really well and uh, uh, no, but we do, you know, you, you have to know how to fight. You have to fight the subject, not the person. Yep. Um, and that's something that, that we've uh, accomplished. We, we know how to fight. And so we know how to fight for what we believe. We're both very passionate. It works really well. I, I totally agree with that because I've, I've, I've been married for 31 years and, and I, but I like that. That's, I don't want to call it a confrontation. I like that disagreement because it grows together like faith. If faith was not challenged, where would we be? That's exactly correct. And in fact, you can predict a marriage by by two things, either how how they fight or how they don't ever fight. And if they don't ever fight, that marriage is doomed because there's no spice. There's no fun in it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The challenges, the changes and then sitting down. Hey, let's talk about this because I think we can do this even better than what we did. Let's start let's, like, for instance, over the weekend, I picked up pickleball for the very first time. What a challenge there. Oh, well, good for you. It's good fun. We play with our kids as well. It's uh, a lot of, lot of fun and a lot of good exercises. We had a really good fight on the, on the set of Miracle in East Texas, actually. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and it was interesting because this one, uh, not unlike most of the fights, Kevin actually won. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I got to give you a compliment, Kevin. That Southern accent you've got is pretty authentic because I'm here in Charlotte, uh, North Carolina, and, and we have the authentic accent here. There, well, there. Thank you very much. I think Sam's was pretty good too, and she actually went to Duke, so she knows North Carolina oh, pretty well. But, that, um, we're we're hoping that people jump in. The, the movie is this weekend only, the October 29th and 30th. So we're hoping people fill those theaters up right now by going to sorbostudios.com. That's sorbostudios.com and sign up. Okay, let's For tickets. Let's Go buy tickets. Let's, let's talk about the business side of that because why is it only one weekend? Is it because that's our attention span in this modern world? No, actually, it's because we, we didn't have that much money to put this movie okay. into theaters, so we had to do a Fathom event, and Fathom dictates. Um, we're very grateful to Fathom because they offer us the opportunity on a low budget to put this movie into theaters, but uh, the, the limitation is we get two, two play dates. We, we get Saturday, Sunday and Monday, and that's it. But I'm hoping people, maybe even instead of going out uh, for Halloween mm -hmm. to all that ghoulish stuff that's happening across the nation, maybe they'll go to the theater and have a laugh instead. It's a family-friendly movie, so you can bring your whole family. In fact, I put out some resources on sorbostudios.com. They're free. Uh, there's a discussion guide because the movie is historic. It tells the true story of the East Texas oil strike. And um, there's a lot to discuss in the movie, just just from the humor, from the the aspect of the theme of forgiveness, the theme of entrepreneurship that we see, the the theme of American ingenuity that we have in the movie. And so there's a homeschool resource, and there's a there's a group discussion guide if you want to invite your your book club to go see the movie and have a have a good discussion about something that's actually meaningful in your lives. I noticed that. You know, a lot of Hollywood films, the big blockbusters, for instance, you know, you go and you you watch the movie and you leave the theater kind of exhausted, yeah. but really no better off in your life. This movie is intended to 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 uplift you, to to make you feel better about things and to be happier and uh, and offer you some hope. There's a line in the movie that really is still living inside my heart, falling prey to their romantic gestures and promises of profits. How many of us are guilty of that line right there? Well, yeah, I mean, that's that, that's well, look, we all went to public school and what we learned in the government schools is that our value is tied intrinsically to how much money we make. And so we, we have this this offset of, oh, I need money and I always need more money. And you know what you can never get? You can never get to more. Right. <laughs> you never will have enough. 
And the sooner that you realize that in your life and, and sort of um, divorce yourself from the desire for money, the happier you will be. When you realize that your blessings aren't in the amount of money that you have, but in your relationships, and this is why I advocate for home education, um, then then you realize what where the value, the true values of life are. And this is actually the character arc of Kevin's character in Miracle in East Texas. So it's one of the things that we depict in this movie for people to to recognize in their own lives. See, I was going to ask you about that. Did you become the teacher to other families during the lockdown? Because with with what you believe in at, for homeschooling, I, it, it's like that that was the, I thought that was going to become the new way of bringing an education into the soul of humans. Well, there are two million more families that are home educating now because of COVID. Nice. Uh, I became the spokesperson for the Texas Homeschool Council. Um, and so I did, I, I, you know, and, and that's sort of my ministry is I, I train parents on what, what we actually should mean by education, because we've, we've redefined the, well, I should say they've redefined the term. And, um, and honestly, I don't understand how, how Christians can send their children into a system mm -hmm. that ignores the Bible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Christianity, every saint has a past. Every sinner has a future. I instantly thought of Paul, but at the same time, I couldn't help but think of Peter. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, we had Dan Gordon who wrote this movie is an unbelievable writer. He, he was uh, nominated for original screenplay for the hurricane with Denzel Washington. He wrote wider Kevin Costner. And he's just, he brought this film to us and we fell in love with it right away. And any taglines he comes up with for all is just brilliant. So um, this movie will really touch a lot of people's hearts. I get stopped all the time and it wasn't, isn't because my old series Hercules or Andromeda. It's now because the movies that I'm like, what if God's not then yep. soul surfer, let there be like people say, please make more movies like that. Well, here it is. And to answer your question a little bit earlier, I know Sam touched on it. The trouble with independent movies, we don't have a hundred million dollar advertising budget. They have that when they do movies like Avatar, you know, and Pirates of the Caribbean. So we can't put a commercial on every football game and every sitcom. We got to rely on word of mouth and people need to support these movies because Hollywood is winning the culture culture war right now. And these movies do what Hollywood used to do, movies that had hope and love and laughter in it. We're still making them because that's what made me fall in love with the business to begin with. I, I know that you talked about it's only open for two days. Thank thank God to Fathom because we all love Fathom. But the thing is, where's it go from there? Is it, is it going to go up onto the, the streaming? Well, that I mean, that that is... You know, that's the dilemma. Hopefully we do very well in theaters and then it will go further into the streaming market. But if if it doesn't do well, then it's going to be a struggle and uh, fewer and fewer people would see it. So the more people who go to the theaters, the better off the movie is and the and the more chance that it has to survive and uh, and and reach people all over the world. The moviegoer is there. They just need to be shown the way. They just, when they go to a movie theater, it, it's fun to sit there and watch them. What do you want to see today? What do you want to see today? And so, th for the two of you to come out and uh, and talk about this movie, this is how you get people to move by like by letting them know what the movie is and where it is. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, again, everybody should just go to sorbostudios.com. You can sign up for our newsletters. That's how we stay in touch because. Um, we, we are, uh, well, my husband certainly is a victim of the cancel culture. Facebook took him down. LinkedIn took him down. Mm. Uh, so we- Hollywood we, took me down. We, mm. Yeah, we, we communicate via email or texting and um, the free resources are there on sorbostudios.com. All of the homeschooling stuff that I do is there. Everything is there. So just go to sorbostudios.com. I love it. You guys have got to keep in touch with me because I want to promote everything that you're doing because I love your message in these movies and stories. Kevin, you've always been there every time that we've talked. It's always been about how can we grow forward? Okay, let me share a story. That's what Kevin does. Well, we got a couple of wonderful other movies in post-production right now, and I got two documentaries coming out next year as well that people will absolutely love. One deals with The Last Supper, and it's going to oh. come out around Easter time, and it's called Eating with the Enemy. Oh, my. I, I can't wait to talk to you again, you two. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. Great to speak. You be brilliant today, okay? 